Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum students. Today we're going to study about biotechnology. So we are starting this chapter and our first lesson is about introduction. What basically is biotechnology? We will study how biotechnology has evolved and um, oh, we're going to study about um, uh, nature of biotechnology, we will start, we will basically will focus on uh, biotechnology um, and we're going to focus on its history, uh, how it has evolved with the passage of time. And um, we will study, um, we will also study about, um, um, it's a little bit about its applications as well. So um, let's start with this topic. Um, as today is the first day and I have introduced you this term biotechnology. So I really want to ask you that, have you heard about this term before? What basically is biotechnology? Can you share some, uh, can you give me some ideas, some examples of biotechnology? Have you heard about biotechnology? biotechnology you have studied biology now can you tell me about biotechnology what basically biotechnology is so students basically biotechnology is a technology which uses biological organisms to produce or to modify uh, products so it's basically the purpose is beneficial. It is for uh, benefit of humans, benefit for the environment. What we do is we use living organisms for the benefit and, and make some new products, some, um, some useful products for the benefit of mankind. So biotechnology, in simple words, I'm going to give you an example of biotechnology. It is like, you know, we use yeast in bread to, because if, uh, to make, we use yeast in flour to make bread. If we don't use yeast, the bread will be flat. So, uh, so to, in order to have bread, we use yeast, which is a unicellular microorganism. So we are using yeast, which is a microorganism, and we make a make bread, which is a new product. So biotechnology, in simple terms, it is the use of living organism to make a new product or to modify a product or to make something better for the benefit of mankind. So if there was no yeast used, so the bread would be flat. So now you have a, of a bread which is swollen. It is because of the yeast. And flour can be used in variety of things. We use, we use flour to make pizza, to make bread. So this is all because of yeast. So in order to make different products and to make that, you know, or to make um, food, which uh, to make food and uh, uh, you know preserve food, we use living organism to preserve food to make texture good, to make its flavor good. We use living organism. So this is biotechnology, and it's not something new. People have done. People are doing biotechnology uh, for the past thousands of years, and it, like you know, people are doing since they are you know. They have started living on earth. They are practicing it, but they were not familiar with the term biotechnology. They had no idea. They were just accidentally, they were using living organism and making new products. They had no idea that it's biotechnology. So accidentally things were discovered. They got to know the users and they started employing it to make different products. What is biotechnology? And now we're going to study more that it is a multidisciplinary in nature. You know, it involves input from other disciplines like engineering, computer science, 
cell and molecular biology, microbiology, you know, genetics, physiology, biochemistry, immunology, virology, and recombinant DNA technology, which basically means manipulation of genetic material. So these all disciplines are involved. Just I have given you an example of um, yeast, which is basically a microorganism. So microbiology is linked in biotechnology. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna see now the stages of biotechnology. So as I told you, that biotechnology is not a new field. You know, biotechnology has been divided into three. Uh, stages, ancient bi uh, biotechnology. I mean, you know, the early, you know, people, they used um, biotechnology for food, for domestication, for shelter, they were using biotechnology. You know, they, um, they, they made bread, they made beer, they made wine, they made cheese by using living organisms. So they were, they were using biotechnology. Then there was a time of classical biotechnology, which was built on ancient biotechnology. And they used fermentation um, to promote or to produce food, different foods and medicine. So, you know, in classical biotechnology, fermentation was there to make different products of food and medicines. And then there was there is bi modern biotechnology, which is basically genetic engineering, which is, you know, to identify genes in organisms and modify it or insert in other organism to uh, modify characteristics or traits. So now we are actually living in an era of modern biotechnology, which is basically involved in manipulation of genetic material. It means to identify gene, to give that gene a command, and that, and you know, um, that gene will serve the mankind in simple words. So basically, you know, as we look at the ancient biotechnology, so basically, you know, so biotechnology started with like, you know, the Egyptians, you know, they used uh, yeast to make leaven, to bake leaven bread and, you know, then Chinese developed fermentation techniques for brewing and cheese making. Aztecs use spirulina algae to make, you know, cakes. So it was discovered accidentally, you know, and it was done purely to improve flavor and texture. Like, you know, the bread would never be, uh, you know, the flour would be, the bread would be flat if yeast were not added. So it was done, it was discovered accidentally that yeast, you know, undergoes anaerobic respiration, produces ethanol and carbon dioxide, which makes the flour um, um, sour, and you know, uh, it also rises the flour. So it was it was discovered accidentally. Then they, you know, then they started deliberately, you know, contaminated products with bacteria and fungi. And um, their efforts, you know, uh, because of their efforts and, you know, because of their deliberate efforts and because of ac accidents, you know, they have discovered bread, yogurt, sour cream, cheese, wine, beer, sauerkraut. So this was all done by, you know, ancient biotechnologists. So, so. Over 10,000 years ago, men were producing wine, beer, vinegar, bread, and they were using microorganisms, mostly, you know, yeast. And fermentation is basically the process in which, you know, carbohydrates were converted into alcohol or acid. So like um, grapes contain, you know, carbohydrates. Those carbohydrates were converted into alcohol by microorganisms. In the same way, yogurt was produced by lactic acid bacteria. So basically, the milk contains a carbohydrate named as lactose. So this bacteria convert this lactose into lactic acid. And as a result, we get yogurt. So this is all the results of fermentation. 
classical biotechnologists were more, you know, um, classical biotechnology actually, you know, so they, you know, um, they started exploiting the ancient uh, fermentation or discoveries of ancient biotechnologists and they started making other different products like vinegar, different types of beer, glycerol, acetone, butanol, lactic acid, citric acid, antibiotics. You know, fermenters were used to make penicillin. Penicillin is an antibiotic, which is formed from the, um, from the penicillin fungus. And then, you know, from different range of products to started to make, or started to uh, make, and were started to develop. So, so basically it started as recipes for food production, but now includes technology to enhance everything. You know, and then the modern biotechnology. So basically, beginning of the 20th century, industry and agriculture started to incorporate biotechnology. And then, you know, nowadays we, we just look at gene cloning, you know, genetic engineering, recombinant DNA technology. Um, human genome project and you know nowadays what we are doing is we are making disease resistant plants we are making uh, crops which produces high yield we are making crops which are more nutritious fruits and vegetables more nutritious fruits and vegetables and we are uh, genetically engineering bacteria to control environmental pollution if we look at the timeline that how modern biotechnology was developed. So basically in 1750 before Christ, Sumerians they grew beer. 500 BC, Chinese used moldy soya bean curds as an antibiotic to treat boils. So see, they were using biotechnology. 1590, Jensen invented a microscope and 1675, Liu and Hu discovered different cells. 1830, protein are discovered. 1833, first enzymes isolated. Then 1855, Escherichia coli bacteria was discovered. In 1910, chromosomal theory of inheritance was proved. In 1928, Alexander Fleming discovered antibiotic properties of certain molds. 1941, George Beadle and Edward Totem they proposed one gene makes one protein. 1949, sickle cell anemia demonstrated to be molecular disease. 1975, DNA sequencing was discovered. 1975, monoclonal antibody technology introduced. Then 1978, uh, genetic used engineering uh, genetic engineering to produce human insulin using Escherichia coli. 1978, Carrie Mullis discovered PCR. So 1996, Dolly was made the first sheep using asexual production. 1990, first conviction using genetic fingerprinting. 1996, uh, development of epimetric gene chip. 1997, first artificial chromosome was formed. 1998, human embryonic stem cells were grown. 1999, Lera announces completion of Drosophila genome sequence. Then 2000, you know, in 2000, 90% of human genome sequence published on web. 2001, human genome project completed. So, so this is the brief history of uh, biotechnology. Now, um, now basically, uh, you know, genetic engineering um, is like a new, you know, it's it's new um, thing in biotechnology. It started with selective breeding, actually, you know. So humans were trying to produce better variety of crops by breeding different varieties. So, you know, plants can be bred, you know, the cross breeding can happen. Uh, you know, different varieties of plants can be bred together uh, as long as they belong to the same species. So we have an example of calates, you know. So basically calates, they are made up of two um, plants that is kale and Brussels sprouts. So these belong to the same species that is brassica. And they are 
spread together and produce a new variety, which is called as calates. Now, calates, in you know, advantage of calate, it, it's high in vitamin C. It is rich source of vitamin C, and it is tasty and it is easy to prepare. So, you know, both plants, good characteristics were taken, and a new product and a new, you know, plant or new, you know, um, varieties produced, which is calates. So this was done long, you know, people used to do this, um, you know, so this was all um, done long time ago. You know, people were, you, people were doing it. They were doing it for the past thousands of years. You know, they used to, um, you know, uh, they used to breed um, cow and bull, bull which produces more meat and cow which produces more milk. And as a result, they would have calves with uh, more meat and more milk production. And they used to do it for thousands of years. And, you know, as a result, they would have, a, um, you know, progeny or they would have a generation which were giving more milk and more meat, producing more meat than their ancestors. So this was, um, this was done for, for the past thousands of years. So selective breeding is, you know, it is, it's, it's, it's very, you know, it was, it's, it's not something new. It was done for the past thousands of years. So, so um, in the same way, you know, there are different varieties of dogs, you know, and uh, so dogs were all, you know, they belong to the same species. So they were, you know, selectively bred for thousands of years to produce desirable dogs. So in order to produce uh, or in order to make our lives better. So dogs were being bred for herding, hunting, protecting us and to simply have, um, you know, companionship and fun. So selective breeding was done a uh, long time ago and was done to produce crops which are more drought tolerant, which used to taste better, which used to give a high yield, which were insect resistant. Genetic modification, on the other hand, it is a more recent approach to biotechnology. So basically, you know, gene as a result, you know, gene is discovered, chromosomes were discovered. So after that, you know, um, genetic modification was, uh, was, was, was used. So basically, you know, there are some plants which are insect resistant. You know, when insects try to eat them, they produce toxins and kill them. So those genes were identified, they were uh, removed from the plants and they were inserted in crops which were edible. And as a result, we got crops which were insect resistant. So this is a very, this is an advantage of genetic engineering. In the same way, genetically modified male mosquitoes were created and released into the environment in several places. And when these mosquitoes mate with female mosquitoes, the offspring produced do not survive long enough to reach maturity and bite humans. As a result of this, we got the, we, we, you know, the major benefit of this is the reduction in serious diseases such as malaria, um, you know, which is a very, very dangerous disease. So these are all the advantages of um, genetic manipulation, genetic engineering, biotechnology. Now, there are some questions arises. First question is, are genetically modified food and crops dangerous to human health and to the environment? So basically, you know, there are food, genetically modified food and crops, which are, you know, um, obviously they are genetically modified and they are, you know, sold in markets. So now the question arises, okay, whether they are dangerous to human health and why. So there are different kinds of foods not only just one kind of food. So obviously they have undergone through various tests, you know, national food um, authorities, they test it, they uh, assess and evaluate those products. And obviously if they are in the international market and, you know, they are um, sold. So obviously they have um, been, you know, uh, they are not dangerous. They have, um, they, 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 do, they don't produce such toxins and, uh, they do not cause allergies or they're not just, you know, uh, harmful for the environment. So yes, they have undergone all those tests. So obviously, if any any food, genetically modified food is, you know, found or it is, you know, in the market, so obviously it has to undergo certain tests. 
and unless and until it doesn't it is not approved by the world health organization and national food authorities it will not be sold in the markets second is our genetically modified food assist different from traditional foods so yes basically traditional foods you know sometimes you know natural selection by means of natural selection different varieties of plants fruits and vegetables are produced so they are not necessarily you know they do not undergo um, you know um, tests they're not um, they do not undergo different tests and um, evaluation procedures but genetically modified foods because human is involved um, to insert gene from one organism into another and to produce a different variety so in this in that case in you know they are assessed different they are assessed religiously and very strictly third question arises are genetically modified organisms halal yes they are um, genetically modified organisms are halal uh, as long as the um, as long as you know um, we are just trying to make new uh, better variety as long as there there are better varieties of um, uh, of plants and fruits, vegetables, and animals, so uh, they are totally halal. So, um, in the next lesson, we will study about applications of biotechnology, and we will study about biotechnology in Pakistan and its effect on people over time. So, we're going to study about how genetically, um, how you know, uh, different food products are found by means of the um, biotechnology. So what basically, what are the applications of biotechnology? What are the uses of biotechnology? And uh, how it has affected our lives? Thank you.